In this video, we're going to go over how in Comfy UI using Animate Diff, how to use a vid to vid workflow to make something like this. Before we get started, if you would like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, that'd be amazing. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Now, if you don't have Comfy installed, this tutorial is going to be a little hard to follow. Thankfully, I already have a Comfy UI installation video on my YouTube. So be sure to go check that out and get Comfy installed and then come on back here. First things first, we're going to need to get a workflow. So if you're going to go to my website and you can go ahead and grab the image here, save image as, and I'll of course leave a link in the description below to that. And then you're going to boot up Comfy. So what you're going to do is with that image, if you're not aware, you can just go ahead and drag and drop it into there and it will change everything that's going on. So it'll, it'll just load up that workflow. Now, if you run into some red boxes, that's okay. What you're gonna do, in case you watched my uh, installation video, you're gonna go to manager, you're gonna go to install missing custom nodes. It will bring these up and you'll click install and then you'll just go ahead and restart Comfy. But before you restart Comfy, now that we have all the nodes, we need to get the animate diff motion modules. So go ahead and download those. And once they've been downloaded, what you're going to do is you are going to go where your comfy is located. You're going to go for me, it's my eDrive and click on comfy UI. I'm going to go to custom nodes. Then I'm going to go to animate diff evolved and then models. And this is where those models are going to live. Keep in mind that those are different from Motion Loras. While Anime Diff still uses those, they are not the same thing. Okay, so now that you have those in there, you can restart Comfy, and you're gonna get a workflow that looks like this. And the video we're gonna use for this workflow that you saw, I will link below, and it's just this video from Pexels of this guy dancing. So you're gonna go ahead and download that, and then you're gonna choose that file to upload. This one that I'm using is a little bit uh, cropped in, so just be aware of that. You might need to do that. So we have our video here. We have our width and height, and these you can kind of adjust for your video. Generally, for something vertical like this, this works really well. That's going to upscale it to the nearest exact, and then we're going to get some preview images. And before I go any further, something I like to do is I like to set this to 20 because it just lets me test things because we don't really have a preview option in Comfy. And then generally, you know, I won't skip the first frames if I like them. And then I generally will always use select, you know, use a one, select every nth. So we went through that and it's going to go through this processor here for, it's like open pose, but DW is better. But I am using the same control net for the open pose control net. And then uh, you can see I have other options here. If you wanna add more in, I just figured I would add some in. If you want to, for this video, we don't have to use that, but if it's not as coherent as you would like to be or something along those lines, if you use Soft Edge or Line Art, those generally will help. If you wanna get these out of bypass mode, you can do a Control B or you can right click and click on bypass and it will undo that. So that is one way you can get through with that. And that we need to go back down here a little bit. Make the checkpoint I'm using is tune new, but really any checkpoint will work. And then I have just the standard VAE. Now we have our prompt over here, and this is for a batch prompt schedule. You could just use a normal prompt box, but I find I just use this more than anything anyway. So what we're gonna do is we have the pretext and app text. And normally when you load a node like this, they might not be there. But if you want to put them in, you can say, okay, cool, let's convert, you know, a text to an input. That would make this like like this, for example. But if I want to bring these back in, you can convert these to a widget. Now the reason we have these out here is just when they're in widget form, it's hard to read everything that's in there because it's just like one line and it only, you know, gives you like 15 characters, so it's hard to see. So that's why we have the pretext and app text out here. Now, what do these mean? Pretext is basically going to place all of this before 
the main part of the prompt, and app text is going to replace what's ever in here after the end of the prompt. It just allows you to be a lot more organized if you're trying to go along a similar theme. We have our max frames. You can really set this to be whatever for this portion. 1200, this totally worked for me. You can also set it to 20 to match the amount you're testing with. And we have our negative prompts down here as well. Now for our animate diff nodes, so I will tell you right now, if you do not have a context length of 16 and you try to go higher, it's not gonna work out well for you, so just don't do it. And anything, like you might be able to get away with eight, but if you can do 16, why not? And then this is where those uh, motion modules will live, and I have a few different ones in here, but we're just gonna use the some this one that we downloaded, the MMSD V15 version two. Now we have our case sampler, and we have, we skipped over the encode, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Case sampler, now, you can see here we have our seed is outside of this and we could put it inside if we want. For this tutorial I will show you how and so this is connected to the model, everything here from the control net connected to the stack, the prompt connects to here, they all go together right here, it brings it to the case sampler and say you know I don't want to have this out here right? Okay cool we can get rid of that. You can go ahead and delete it and then right click and then if you want to do, you know, convert C to a widget, now it's within the case sampler. And unless I have something I like, I will put it on randomize. And let's change this to 30. And CFG is fine at 10. Let's make this Euler Ancestral. That's what I like. And we have our VAD, VAE decode. And the save image and our animate diff combine at the very end here. Now, Preview images can be useful. I generally don't use them a lot. And then save with save image is I don't really have a use for these images, but I'm going to include them for the sake of this tutorial in case you do. So now that we've gone over everything in there, we're gonna go ahead and run it. And again, when you see the green boxes and it's going through everything, that's where it's at within what it's working with. So the DW preprocessor is gonna take a little bit of time. So just be aware of that. It took around 20 seconds or so to do. It's going through the case sampler and it's going to just kind of chuck through this. And I'll pop back in when it's done. And then we're going to the VAD code. It's going to save our images and we have our animation. So this is what our video looks like. And right now it is at a frame rate of 12. You can change this to like say 15. That's what I generally like to do because then later if I want it's be at 30 frames per second or 60. I can interpolate that and that way I don't have to use as many frames when I'm generating it originally and I find that to be really useful. Secondly, I always have the format in H.264 or MP4 and not a GIF because the GIFs only have 256 colors and so you'll get some funky artifacts if you're using it as a GIF. The other thing that we should be aware of is, hey, I generated this, where does it live? Well, if we go to where our Comfy is installed, we click on Comfy UI, we're gonna go to Output, and this is where all of this stuff is installed, and if this is the video, this is the PNG where that workflow is generated from. And then all of your images are going to be saved in a separate images folder, and if I scroll up over here, you have a capital I images slash image, and that's exactly where these are saved. And that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to comment, do that. It'd be amazing. Uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one because I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. See ya.